All right, guys, let's do it. Let's talk about the most amazing reads of 2016. Finally, like mid-January 2017, but it's cool. It's cool. We're gonna do this. This list isn't too shabby, so I'm going to try and go through it as fast, but not rushed, but not too draggy longy either, because we don't want that. Also, this list is in no particular order, because one, all movies are of different genres, and it's really hard to compare different genres, and two, and the biggest reason is probably because I am very lazy, sorry not sorry. Okay, so let's get started. One of the first movies that comes to mind is definitely Zootopia. I did not watch it when it came out in theaters, but once the DVD came out, I watched it and it was amazing and I need a Zootopia too. Nick Wilde was absolutely wonderful. There were some really great themes in the movie and actually I have a extra credit project due for university where I can watch Zootopia again and just make a video or something about it and just talk about the themes and Yay, extra credit, and I'm so about to do that because I will use any excuse to watch Zootopia again. Next on the list is Suicide Squad. This was not a movie I was particularly excited for. I didn't even think I was going to watch it and did not watch any of the trailers. Zero excitement, but I was dragged to the movies along with my family and I watched it and my mind was blown. I actually really want the DVD of it now because all those villains all together are amazing. If you don't know, I am a huge fan of villains. I didn't know that I was a fan of DC villains, but clearly I am and they make a really good team. Next on the list, not at all unexpected if you followed me during my blog days, and that is Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. I was freakishly obsessed with this movie ever since I watched this. It was such a good movie and the graphics were amazing and that was the movie, that was the moment that I fell in love with Superman and oh my goodness, I want to watch Smallville now because I'm just so pumped and it's another reason I'm excited for Justice League this year because more Superman, always a good thing. And the end, I don't know if you watched Dawn of Justice, but the end, hmm, the end. <laughs> I just remembered the end. I didn't even remember it until I started talking about this movie. Okay, let's move on. Next we have Bridget Jones' Baby. So super good. Darcy, 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 Darcy. So much Darcy, I loved it. And I never even thought of pitting Patrick Dempsey against Colin Firth, but Colin Firth won all the way in my heart. Patrick Dempsey stood zero chances. I was also really happy that Hugh Grant's character was not in this film because I really hated him ever since the second movie. And so when, this isn't a spoiler, but when we go to his funeral in the beginning of Bridget Jones' Baby, I laughed out loud in the middle of the theater and I still feel kind of bad about it, but honestly, not that much. Next we have Doctor Strange. This obviously was super hyped up. I was super hyped about it. It's Benedict Cumberbatch and it's Marvel and what could go wrong? Absolutely nothing. He was such a witty character. He lived in New York in a penthouse and was a surgeon, aka Dream Life, and it was definitely one of the best Marvel movies I've ever seen and I'm very very much looking forward to a Doctor Strange too, so hopefully that will be somewhere in our futures because I am so up for that. Next on our list is La La Land. I actually just did a movie review of that recently, so definitely go check that out if you haven't. But it was so good. One of the best musicals I've watched in my life, and I did not even expect that. I just knew that Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone were an adorable fictional couple, and it they definitely were an adorable fictional couple and I totally cry every time I think of that movie. I want to go watch it right now but I'm also afraid that I don't have enough tissues in the house and we don't want to start a flood here. Next, Captain America Civil War. I was excited about this. I have not watched any Iron Man movies in my life and have only watched the first Captain America movie but I just love the idea of everyone coming together into one movie and heroes pitted against heroes. Before the movie I was strictly Team Iron Man even though I've never watched a single movie of his but whatever. But once I was in the movie theater five minutes into the movie I was like heck yeah I'm Team Captain America. Not only because his team was so much fun but also because I believed his ideology in the movie and it was just so good and I love it and it was not long enough. Like it was a long movie and that movie was not long enough. Next we have X-Men Apocalypse. I am a huge fan of X-Men. It's one of the Marvel thingy-bobs that I love unconditionally and it was really really good. I know people said X-Men Apocalypse wasn't good but I don't know what's wrong with them because it was really good. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Super good. Even that one minute of Logan, albite naked Logan, was really good and totally worth the watch even if you're just in it for Logan. Of course I was in it for the entire thing. I wish things happened that didn't happen. I'm thinking of Quicksilver and his father here, but ugh, it was so good and so many feels. X-Men gets all the feels every single time. I feel like those movies just get better and better. Next, 
don't start crying on me, although I may start crying on you, is me before you. I freaking love that movie. Actually, to be politically correct, I like the book much more than the movie, but you know what? They're honestly kind of the same thing. They're actually literally the same thing, which is why I like the book more than the movie. The movie just annoys me because it has absolutely zero difference from the book. And I know people want that, especially book lovers, but I'm different because I actually enjoy when there are some differences. I don't like when everything is exactly the same because that makes things boring. Why watch the movie then when you can just read the book? Either way, super good movie, great cast, and one of my friends cried at the exact same spot in the movie that I cried during the book. So again, they're exactly the same, but that can definitely be a good thing when you need it to be. So I absolutely love the movie. Next we have Finding Dory. I was not excited for this at all. I didn't really think a Nemo spin-off would be super exciting, but then I got myself to watch Finding Dory and it was amazing. I don't remember if I cried or not, but it blew me away with how funny it was and how adorable and the new characters were really amazing and this is why Disney is Disney. Next on the list is Ghostbusters. I don't even remember what my expectations were on this movie, but obviously they were blown away because it was so good and yes, it was way better than all of the male Ghostbusters movies movies and I say this because I have not watched any of them but also I don't think you can beat the comedy in this one. I highly highly doubt it and Ghostbusters 2 I, I would be up for that in a minute less than a minute in like a millisecond. Next Nerve. I read the book very recently and right before the movie actually because I wanted to read the book before the movie as I do but nope the movie was a hundred thousand times better so definitely 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 watch the movie and do not read the book. Next, obviously, obviously, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It blew me away. I expected nothing because how can you beat Harry Potter? Fantastic Beasts, in my opinion, did not beat Harry Potter because you can't beat the original, but it was pretty darn close. I'm very excited to read the screenplay and relive it another time. Finally, last but not least on the list, I have Smaragd Green or Emerald Green. I also reviewed this pretty recently. This is the third movie in the Ruby Red movie adaptations of the books and it was so good. Not quite as as good as the last two movies but does that even matter no especially because there was this really cute montage at the end that combined all three movies and showed us Gideon and Gwendolyn in the movie her name is Gwendolyn but actually it's Gwyneth but it showed us their relationship and oh my goodness so cute and yeah I felt a lot of feels during this movie so thumbs up from me. So that is my list of super amazing 2016 movies. Definitely watch those movies if you haven't yet because they are so worth the watch. If you're wondering why Miss Peregrine's and Moana did not make this list, it is because I have not watched them yet. Miss Peregrine's because I did not love the books as much as everyone else, but I do plan on watching the movie whenever I feel like it. Moana, I was not as excited for as everyone else either, but I did actually try a week ago to watch the movie, but apparently it was sold out more than a month after the movie came out, so I don't know, clearly I'm not the only procrastinator here. Any other movie that didn't make the list is probably because I didn't watch it. If you have any recommendations for me, please put them in the comments below because I would love to watch them. I am always up for recommendations. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and please subscribe to the channel if you're in the mood for more super cute videos. I'm kidding, they're normal, but whatever. If you're into it, go subscribe. Alright, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you later. Bye!